Moving back to the Steyr 308, as we move along, we move into the optic. The optic is where you want to spend most of your money if you're building a rifle or you're purchasing a rifle on the budget. We've had discussions before, some of the other instructors and I, about buying a $5,000 gun and then putting a $500 optic on it. You essentially have a $500 gun. If you have a limited budget or you want to know where to put your money, put it into an optic. So what I have here for you on display is a Leupold Mark V. This is a beautiful optic. It's kind of taken the PRS world of the Precision Rifle Series by storm. A lot of guys are placing on the podium with it. Um, I use this for everything. I can hunt with it. I can match shoot with it. I can go out there and plink steel with it. I, it's my end all be all. There's a bunch of other great options out there. Uh, Loophole does have a, a great selection of, of other optics out there. Some of our other precision rifle instructors shoot different brands and they're all completely acceptable. What you wanna make sure is that it has a couple of key features. So this optic, uh, this is a, a five by 25, which means um, it, the, lowest vario, the lowest power that I can set this thing to is five power. And the highest that I can do it is 25 power. Uh, they do offer this model in a seven by 36, I believe, um, but five by 25 is what I like. So as I attach my rifle, uh, my optic to my rifle, I wanna have a, a good set of scope rings. I prefer to have aluminum scope rings, and these are APAs, uh, aluminum scope rings. I wanna stay away from steel because steel will eventually rust over time, and you won't necessarily see the surface rust on the outside of the scope rings, but you'll, you'll see it underneath the scope rings when you go to take this thing off to do some maintenance, and you won't realize there's been rust sitting on your actual optic all this time. Um, also, as I attach my optic, if you wanna get into long range shooting, I'm talking, you know, 1,000 yards plus. Um, but even before that, you want to make sure that you have some type of way to level the optic like we talked about earlier. This is a bubble level. This is by uh, Flatline Optics. And I just simply attach this to the uh, optic. I make sure that it's level to the optic after my optic is level to the rifle. Say that five times fast. All right. And what this does is this gives me the ability to pop this bubble level out to the side, to the left just a little bit. That way I can look through my glass and I can take a peek real quick at this bubble level to make sure my rifle is level before I take my shot. If it's not, I just cant the rifle a little bit, make sure my shooting position is good, and then I send the rounds. Also with this optic, uh, we have a couple of different turrets to make adjustments. So these little caps up here, these are called turrets, just like a tank turret or a, a Humvee turret. Uh, typically on the right side of the optic, facing you right here, this is the elevation turret. All right, I, ha I prefer to have tactical turrets um, on my optics, that way I can freely dial them back and forth. Uh, but the elevation tur turret is usually gonna have some type of cap on it, all right? And so if I unscrew this cap right here, I'm sorry, the windage turret, um, as I unscrew the cap, you can see the notification or the uh, markers for my wind. Now, we're not gonna get into how to properly zero your rifle and how to make adjustments on the optic itself, um, but you want to know where each of these turrets are and, and what to look for in the turrets. So as I turn these turrets, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but there are audible and tangible clicks that I can feel with the turret. All right, that way I know as I'm making adjustments, I know exactly where I am. All right, and I'm gonna put the turret cap back on. As I move up to the elevation turret, this turret is set up with a, a, a turret stop. And what that does is no matter where I move in my elevation adjustments, when I hit zero, it stops, and I'm unable to turn the turret anymore unless I depress this button, and then I can move backwards a half mil. All right, what this is good for, I prefer to have a shutdown procedure when I shoot my rifle. So as soon as I'm done engaging a target at a certain distance, I will dial everything back to zero, and I don't have to sit and watch. All right, we're not tactical shooters, we're not snipers out there like Tim and his friends overseas, and so typically we're not gonna be shooting these things um, at night where I'm not able to see the numbers and the digits on this thing and I have to feel where it is. Um, but for me, it gives me a good, um, a good stopping point right here where as I'm talking to students or I'm talking to a friend, it stops right there. Also, as I start to completely revolutionize the turret up here as I move into larger elevation adjustments, all right, it's, you can get lost in the sauce if you're not paying attention to where you are. And so again, the zero stop is kind of home base for me and where I operate out of. On the other side of the rifle,
we have a parallax adjustment. Not every optic is gonna have a parallax adjustment. Uh, it's not 100% necessary if you're not really engaging targets at you know, super far distances. But as we do start to engage targets at far distances, you, you want to look for an optic that does have a parallax adjustment. In our course, we'll get into what parallax is and how to go about adjusting it. Um, there's a lot of you know, swoop, swoopy you know, information out there about what parallax is, uh, but it's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty simple. Um, but if you have it, you want to know how to utilize it. All right, and you come to the course and we'll show you how to master your shooter's equipment. Moving on the rear of the optic, we have our magnification throw lever, all right, and these throw levers in the Mark V, um, they have this little nipple here at the top, and it's easy to grab onto and make adjustments. Uh, they make all different types of attachments that you can put onto these things. That way you can see through it to your elevation, uh, elevation turret if you need to, um, but just know where your magnification turret is. That way when we talk to you guys when you're on the firing line and we ask you why you're zeroing at the lowest power, dial that thing up, you can immediately dial that thing up. Moving back on the stock, we have the actual stock of the rifle to my adjustable cheek piece. All right, this is highly important for precision rifle shooting to be able to adjust your cheek weld and your eye relief all right, as, you try, as you're setting up your shooting position. We'll get into, again, cheek, relief, uh, cheek weld and eye relief in the precision rifle course, um, but in order to change it, you have to have an adjustable cheek piece. So this, like I said earlier, is a custom McMillan stock, and I can spin this wheel to raise, as you guys see, the cheek piece is raising up. I can adjust this in small incremental adjustments as I move along, setting up my rifle, setting up my optic, where I want it to be to get proper cheek weld and proper eye, eye relief. That way I shouldn't be so relaxed on this stock when I go to send rounds down range that I can take a nap on this thing. And then when I open my eyes, I'm still through my glass, I'm on my reticle and I'm on my target and I can send rounds down range. And I love to take a good nap. I also have an adjustable uh, butt piece back here and this is really good for adjusting the length of pull. All right, not every rifle has this ability. I prefer to have this ability on my rifle because I wanna be able to engage all of the controls on my rifle all right, as easily as possible when I'm behind it. And so what I do is I adjust how far back or how far in I want this butt piece right here. That way, if I have you know, short, hairy gorilla arms like I do, I can set it for myself. Or if one of my buddies gets behind this rifle and they have really long uh, arms and they're going to be using this rifle for a little while, we can make an adjustment and they don't have to be crammed up or I don't have to be reaching for all of my controls in this rifle. As I move over into um, some pretty cool, diff uh, different cool uh, rifle models and makes, uh, like I said earlier, we have the traditional stock right here, but there are also chassis that are out there. And we luckily have one over here because again, I work at Sheepdog Response and we have rifles hanging on walls out here. This is a beautiful new custom build, mostly made of Christensen Arms components as I swap these rifles out. All right, so this is sitting on a chassis. The chassis looks a little bit more skeletonized. It looks more um, like streamlined and, uh, and newer. Um, what this is good for is you can see all these different moving pieces right here, these mechanical pieces. In real time, I can make adjustments to my length of pull right here. My cheek piece does move um, on its own right there with the wheel. This thing moves as well. Uh, but what I have to do for my stock is I have to unscrew a couple of nuts and then move the butt pad in and out. Whereas this thing, as you can see, uh, grooved right here, I can move this thing in and out. Um, this is also set up with a trigger tech trigger. Um, as you move into triggers uh, with your rifle, typically uh, you're going to spend some money on a good trigger for a precision rifle. Is it 100% necessary to put you know, $500 into your trigger right off the bat? Like I said earlier, you want to look into good glass. And once again, we know good glass when we see it. We have a loophole Mark V HD sitting up here on top of this rifle. Every rifle shooter should have a sling with them. Whether you're shooting carbine or you're shooting precision, you should bring a good uh, sling with you. A lot of precision shooters don't even think about the sling because in, that, in their mind, they're gonna have the rifle resting on the bipod when they make good shots. And that's great for bipod shooting or for prone shooting on the ground or on the table like we've discussed. But realistically, if you're a hunter, how many of you have shot a, ri uh, shot a rifle at an animal to try and harvest a deer or an elk or whatever you're shooting from the ground. It, it's pretty limited. 
All right, so you're going to have to shoot from some non-standard shooting positions. In our course, we go over non-standard shooting positions. We're talking about um, sitting, kneeling, and then standing. Standing is really difficult if you're standing out there with a long, heavy gun without any support other than yourself. We go over how to utilize your body and how to utilize your hips and where to put your body in place to, to stabilize your, um, your shots. But having a sling with you can really help with that. And so I can use this sling, not just as a holster to carry my, my rifle, but to add extra support by wrapping my arm around the sling in certain ways, um, shortening the sling, length, lengthening the sling, depending on the shooting position that I want to go to. So I would highly recommend bringing a good rifle sling with you. Uh, this is an old school precision rifle, a leather sling. It was gifted to me by a buddy. And no matter where I go in the country with my rifle, I bring this thing with me. Along with the sling, we have our rear bags. So underneath the stock right here, I have uh, an Armageddon rear bag. This is my personal bag that I use or a squeeze bag. This is going to help me set up into positions and get my uh, natural point of aim as I aim my um, sights downrange at my target. And the purpose of the squeeze bag is literally I squeeze it. So as you watch the bag be squeezed, it raises the stock. And as I let pressure off, it lowers the stock. And obviously, as I raise the stock, the barrel is going to go down. And so this is going to help me get into a good solid shooting position as I build the position. Uh, we also have with us here the new Sheepdog Response rear bags. And these things are awesome because you can zip it and unzip it, and you can fill it with um, what, as much sand as you want. You can fill it with rice. You can fill it with BBs. Uh, I like to fill my sand sandbags with M&Ms. That way I can chow down on them as I move along. Um, but Sheepdog Response, you can check our website out for these uh, for a, a, sh a shooting rear bag. I also have with me a homemade rear bag that I made. Now these swoopy ones that you can buy online, I bought this for I think $35, they're really not that expensive. Um, you can get some more expensive ones, but this is the cheapest version that you can make out there. It's just a set of boot socks. This is like an old school military way of doing it. Uh, I, I put a bunch of um, six grain BBs inside of this thing, and then I wrapped it up a couple of times with some 550 cord to tie it off and some boot bands. I wrapped the sock over it. Uh, you can put rice in here, uh, but the downside of rice is if it rains while you're out there on the range, uh, the rice will swell, it'll get a little bit heavier, and then you'll obviously have to get rid of the rice. The plus side of the rice is it's very lightweight. Uh, this thing, like I said, is full of BBs, so I can use this in all weather, but it is pretty heavy. Um, and I also overfilled this thing, that way I can put it underneath the center of my stock when I want to shoot off of barricades. So I have my rear bag right here, and then I have uh, an extra bag to be able to um, support my rifle in you know, all different situations, no matter where I'm shooting from. Along with rear bags, um, it's not necessarily a must-have when precision shooting or precision rifle shooting, uh, but it's pretty convenient because we do live in America and people are getting more and more coddled by the day. So um, consider bringing a, a shooting mat with you. Without shooting bags, they're probably going to lay down in the mud. If you're into that kind of stuff, which I am, um, don't worry about the shooting mat. Uh, but if you do want to bring a shooting mat to make sure that you know you can shoot a couple of rounds on range and then go to church right afterwards and your wife's not going to yell at you, maybe bring a shooting mat. All right, so we've been discussing all of the different equipment that we can put onto a rifle and the different equipment that we can bring with us to a precision rifle course or for long range shooting. The beginning part of our courses are mainly designed to show you the equipment, what the equipment is for, and then we're going to teach you how to master that equipment. Like Tim said, it's no good in having a Ferrari out there if we don't know how to drive that thing. All right, so I have a Ferrari in front of me. I want you guys to bring whatever Ferrari you guys have with you. If you have a Corvette or a Pinto or whatever it is, show me your goods. I want to bring it, I see you bring it out there to the course. I want to see you on the firing line learning to master your equipment. After we've learned to master the equipment, we're going to have to talk about how to send rounds downrange accurately and precisely. And there are a couple of different tools that we can use. First, what I want to talk to you about is a laser range finder. Are there ways to range estimate without using a laser range finder? Absolutely. Uh, we'll briefly mention it in our courses. We'll kind of go over it um, and, and just wave top it uh, to discuss it uh, using your reticle, um, knowing the size of the target, and then there's some uh, formulas that you can use uh, to determine or range estimate your target's um, distance from itself to you. Uh, but again, the year is 2023, and I'm all about using technology. All right, and so uh, using a laser range finder is perfectly acceptable and it's highly encouraged. Um, you can find laser range finders out there anywhere from $1,200 if they're built into a set of binoculars, uh, all the way down to uh, a cheap set like this. This, I think, was like $199 off the shelf. You can even get even cheaper than that. Um, they don't have to be the most crazy, um, you know, $5,000, uh, I mean, 5,000 yard 
uh, capable range finders. Uh, this goes out to about 1,400 yards, and that's perfectly fine for me. All right. Also, as long as we know where the range is, we can start to engage our target, but we have to know how to read the wind. And wind reading is going to be a big portion of our class. That's where a lot of our classroom time is, where we sit down and we talk about learning how to read the wind, um, observing it uh, with our eyes, looking through our glass or looking through our optics to be able to check out the mirage, uh, and then also uh, learning how to use uh, a Kestrel. We won't go uh, deep dive into the Kestrel in our classes just because this is weeks and weeks itself of learning how to use. Uh, but if you do bring a Kestrel with you, I can show you how to input your uh, ballistic coefficient data, your, your load data into the Kestrel. That way it can immediately give you feedback on what type of wind adjustments as well as elevation adjustments you need to make um, when we go to engage multiple targets from longer distances. Uh, the beautiful thing about this thing is it has an anemometer built into it. And so as I whip this thing in the air, I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, precision guys doing that at the, uh, at the ranges, uh, it'll completely take in the atmosphere uh, where I'm standing. And it will give you all the atmosphere conditions from temperature to uh, barometric pressure, station pressure, a bunch of crazy things that you might have never even known existed. Um, and then why does that all that stuff matter? What matters is it has a ballistic calculator built into it and it's going to give you uh, the exact um, elevation and windage adjustments that you need to make on your optic to be able to send the rounds down range. So now we've learned how to master our equipment and run our rifles with authority as masters and then we learn how to read the weather together and then we input all this data into the, um, the ballistic calculator and then it spits out the answer for us. We dial the answer into our optic and then we run our rifle to precision and to accuracy downrange. Uh, the downside of a tool like a Kestrel is it runs anywhere from $399 to six, $700. Some of them are like $800. They're a pretty heavy investment. So Garrett, I, I know what you're saying. Garrett, what do I do um, when I spent all of my money on my optic, like you just told me to, and I have no more money left to buy a Kestrel, now I'm not able to shoot precisely or come to a precision rifle course. But fear not. Again, it's 2023, and we all have a ballistic calculator in our pockets here with our cell phone. So for me, I have a shooting folder on my phone with a bunch of different shooting applications. Right? And there are tons of applications out there. You can pay for some of them, uh, like Applied Ballistics, uh, which is actually the same ballistic calculator that's used in the Kestrel. Um, this one, I think, is $29.99 on uh, the iPhone store or the Android store. Um, or you can use any, any ballistic calculator application uh, out there. Um, the big thing is that you download the app, you input your load data into this thing, and then you go to the range and then you test it. Because this is all, uh, it's a recommendation, it's not gospel, all right? Because there's a lot of, you don't know uh, exactly what the calculator is or what it's basing its information off of um, until you go out there and you confirm. Um, I have the luxury of using things that are tried and true, and so I do that, uh, but I don't want you to think that you have to have uh, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gear to come to one of our courses or to go out there and learn how to be a precision shooter yourselves. Um, there are tons of free resources out there that you can use, and so what's important is you do the research on your ammunition, whatever ammunition that you purchase. All right, you can look on the, the ammunition's website or the manufacturer's website, and it'll tell you everything from, if you don't know already, uh, off of the box, it'll tell you the grain, um, uh, what specific type of round it is. I, I like to shoot Nasser 308 uh, 175 grain RDF. That's my specific ammunition. I go onto the website and it gives me my ballistic coefficient, which we'll talk about in the course. And I plug all of that data into my phone or into my Kestrel and then it'll spit out an answer for me and then I dial that thing onto my optic. What I request of you as shooters when you come to our courses is that you take all that information for whatever ammunition you're gonna bring, and then you come to us with kind of a, a rough idea of where you need to be. That way, it's easier for the instructors to be on the firing line and say, hey, load this in, all right, let's make this adjustment, let's make this adjustment, write that down. That's your dope for 447 yards. As opposed to going down the line for 30 different shooters and plugging in 30 different um, pieces of ammunition. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, pieces of information. So that's something that you can do as a shooter before you come to one of our courses. It's free, it's easy to do, and it's actually really interesting. I'm a nerd, and so I like to sit there and look this stuff up. Um, hopefully you can become a nerd about precision shooters. If there's anything I know about the precision shooting community is we are a bunch of nerds. All right, it's a bunch of numbers and it's a bunch of mathematical formula, but it turns into weaponized math. Um, but we go off of the feedback that you guys give us. If you guys want to see us come out there into your neck of the woods, please contact us. And I'd love to come out there and visit. I love to bring my guns across the country. Um, and, and the more that these guys you know, 
send me out there across the, the, the country to deliver the good news to you guys, the more of an opportunity we'll be able to go out there and weaponize math and have some good fun.